nuclear fusion now we already said fusion is when you fuse two lighter elements together and i will show you the graph also yesterday i said that that graph is the key nowhere in the slides i saw that so i will explain you uh, after we do this so fusion is something that that uh, surya dev the sun does right it takes so what sun does is it takes hydrogen and it has lots of hydrogen in there so it it fuses them together to make helium plus lot of energy so now you think about it the mass has been converted into energy some of the mass is converted into energy so every second the mass of the sun is reducing and lot of reducing because lot of energy is produced yes nina hydrogen plus hydrogen gives you helium uh, read this anything that is not clear i'm going to explain you No, 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 Nina. That is a lot of energy per atom. No, that's not right. Yeah. We'll see the numbers on the upcoming slide. So, everybody, please go through this. Anything that is not clear, I'm going to explain you. So, deuterium, which is an isotope of hydrogen having one neutron, and another deuterium. combined to give you helium okay helium plus neutron right plus 3.3 mega electron volts of energy so one one of that gives you 3.3 mega electron volts that you can convert into joules if required obviously ठीक है anybody uh no so so vasudeva i'm taking your name because i want you to be very confident here you think that this is a stupid question no question is stupid please vasudeva ask any question there is no stupid question okay so any question has to be asked nothing has to be kept there so vasu says i think this is stupid question is it pollution uh, no no you you framing the sentence is not right right question is not stupid are you saying fusion is pollution is that what you're saying yes okay we'll talk about it let let's understand this on the next slide we'll talk about okay and that is something you studied in grade 12 uh disadvantages of nuclear energy let let's talk about it so nuclear energy is not like <coughs> heavily used and they're shutting down many of them many disadvantages not just one number one so when there is a nuclear fuel you're talking of all these uranium 235 and all these aren't they giving out gamma radiations so these gamma radiations are actually very harmful gamma radiations are so energetic they kill the cells right human cells so what you have to do is wherever you have these uh, reactors they are actually enclosed enclosed in lead walls because even gamma radiations cannot be stored by these concrete they cannot be stored by iron also you need thick lead walls for that so you really have to enclose that secondly let's say you have uranium rods and you use it as a fuel it's over now but then you can ju not just throw it away because these are still emitting all these uh, harmful radiations so you have to store them in enclosed container for for centuries actually so where do you dispose of all this uranium waste so all this waste has to be disposed safely that's another disadvantage and now there are um, leakages like that happened i think 3 uh, 4 5 years ago in japan so what if there is a leakage out there these radiations go out to the public and these are really harmful these are dangerous these are not harmful now these are like more like health and and danger kind of thing but there are more about it to start and stop a nuclear reactor it takes energy i mean you cannot just just start like a scooter right it's not so it, there is a lead time between when you can start and stop and all that so that means you cannot have energy on demand like like raat ko energy zyada chahiye right so you can have many reactors that like like let's say charcoal you can burn it and just burn off the fire anytime you can do it anytime you want 
dam water dam open the gates close the gates right but nuclear reactor you cannot do on demand you have to be running it so these cannot be used for evening out the the fluctuation in demand so there are many disadvantages of nuclear energy plus this is a non-renewable source of energy uranium 235 you it's over it's over right there is a limited supply that you have is it clear now <laughs> so it's it's not preferred i mean even though it gives us so much of energy it's not preferred source of energy okay um TK. Uh, what was i talking about here yeah this one right so now this this does some calculations very very easy just just go through that place So three alpha particles are combining to form one carbon nucleus. So kitni energy release okay. Everybody just go through the concept here and, and just just go through. Don't don't worry about the calculation part or something. Just go through that in two minutes. And so I'll do the calculation here. Let's see. Anybody got the answer? Anybody? Vasudeva. Hello. So, Atri, Ganit, Abhinaya, M. Ashik, Manjushri, Ninad, who else? Rhythm, Sai Kumar, Shivangi, Shreya Bhatt, Shreya Hegde, Trisha, Vasudeva. So, Sai Kumar has given the answer here. Let's see. Okay. So, let's see what we have to do. Just let's, let's try to understand first what's happening here there is a helium there's another helium there's another helium three of these are combining like these three combine to give you a carbon so whatever is the mass defect is going to be the equal to the change in it converted to energy right so you had three times of 4.002603 this is what you had and how much do you have here? You exactly have 12, isn't it? Because one atomic mass unit is one twelfth of the carbon atom. So one carbon atom is 12 atomic mass unit. This number multiplied by C square. And let's see, many students have given the answer here, actually. No, actually, Sai Kumar gave the answer, that's all. Okay. Now, is it really clear? Well, you can convert to mega electron volts if you want. By by using 931 mega electron volts is one atomic mass unit. Okay, now I'm going to post a poll saying, is this clear or no? So true means clear, false means not clear. True means clear, false means not clear. Okay, so there are still some students who didn't get it, but then why are you not asking the doubt here? I will explain one more time. I will explain. Just, just leave it. Uh, so this is what I get. Like one third of the class, roughly, like twenty nine percent, didn't follow that. I will do it properly here. Um, is is this part clear to everybody? It's given that three helium atoms or nucleus are combining to give one carbon atom. Okay? Now, atomic mass of each helium atom is given to you. This is 4.00, right? So, total mass, we started with this three times 4.002603U. U stands for atomic mass unit. Okay, one atomic mass unit is 1 12th of the mass of the carbon carbon 12 which is the most abundant form of carbon okay now what you have as a result end result is one atomic mass unit oh sorry 12 atomic mass unit Q because see the definition of one amu is one twelfth of carbon atom so carbon atom kitna ho gaya? one carbon atom is 12 upar gaya, 12 amu Thinkana. so when you're getting a carbon atom you're actually getting 12 amu 
So this number you can convert into SI units and joules and whatever you want. But you can also remember when you do E is equal to MC squared. If you plug in M as um, M as atomic mass unit, so you can do 931 uh, mega electron volts per AMU. Right? Instead of doing joules per kilograms and all that, you can use this easy to to remember and easy to use. 931 mega electron volts is one atomic mass unit. Up, take up, clear. Is it really clear now? You say yes or no. I'm not going to proceed. Say yes or no. Only Sai Kumar is saying yes. Others say yes or no. So, okay, rhythm got it. Okay, Atri got it, Abhinaya got it, Vasudeva got it, Rhythm got it. Okay, okay. Fusion in the sun, right? So, sun may be hota hai. Dek liya humne. So that is all actually. So we have some questions we'll do from GE mains level. But before that, let's try to understand that graph one more time. This is atomic number. This is the binding energy per nucleon. Okay, so our graph was more like this. You have to understand this one more time very, very clearly. This is the most binding energy. This is most stable. This is the least energy, total energy, least total energy. Because the binding energy is negative now. So when you have most binding energy, you have the least total energy. This also means you have least mass, not least mass, but less mass. When you go uphill, when you're going uphill, what you're doing is you're reducing your energy and reducing your mass in turn, right? <laughs> so let's see what happens here. There was one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here. Let me make it big. So there was hydrogen here. There was hydrogen here. They combine together and they climb up the ladder. They become helium. This is fusion, right? So they are going in this direction. They're going in the direction of less mass and less energy. So what that means is when they combine together, the combination has less mass and less energy. That means the rest of it has been released. Same thing happens here in fission. So there is a one big nucleus. It breaks into two nuclei in this direction. So it's going uphill. So it has less mass when it. So this, these two together have less mass compared to that big one. And that is where the energy is released. So whenever you're going uphill, you, the, the nuclei have whatever the product is, has less energy and less mass. And that is why the rest of it is has been re is, is released now. Is this clear? Say yes or no. Is this clear? Say yes or no. Okay, Vasu, Atri, Abhinaya, uh, is there the same kind of response in other subjects also like chemistry and mathematics? Yeah, Sai Kumar, I will answer your question. Sai Kumar, first you answer my question. In chemistry and mathematics class also, is it like the teacher has to keep asking or students participate on their own? In general, not like in general, not in one or two classes in general. Is there a lot of participation there or there is a silence in the class? Sai Kumar, you got to answer that. Atri, you got to answer. Vasudeva, you have to answer. Okay, so they participate by there, right? The students participate a lot, is it? Say, Kumar, say yes or no, they participate a lot there. So why not here? What's wrong here? Is it is it not clear or what's wrong? Anyways, okay. Okay. So when we're saying helium has more, so let's try to understand this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Sai Kumar. So let's say this is this is 
हाइड्रोजन ठीक है हाइड्रोजन का ये वाला राइट right? हाइड्रोजन का प्रोटॉन एंड ए न्यूट्रॉन ठीक है देन यू वन अदर हाइड्रोजन विच हैज प्रोटोन एंड ए न्यूट्रॉन ठीक है यू कंबाइन देम टूगेदर यू गेट हीलियम विथ दिस कंफिग्रेशन and then you get neutron here right as a, as a by product there so this is what you get when when sun combines two neutrons and gets it's a helium is this clear to you sai kumar and everybody theek okay, hai now we go back to the same kind of example with that we were saying let's say this was 1 kg very vague number 1 kg and this was or maybe not 1 kg this is 2 amu right Two atomic mass unit, and this is also two atomic mass unit. ठीक है? This is two atomic mass unit, two atomic mass unit. Now this is one atomic mass unit, and obviously this is a little less than two because of binding energy there also. Uh, so, but then, then we are saying this is not going to be three amu. This is going to be three amu minus the extra binding energy. remember you're going up hill you have more binding energy when you go up there is more binding energy but that energy is negative so then this is not 3 amu this is less mass now this is what we are talking about it has more mass compared to hydrogen but that that more mass actually has a mass defect in there theek okay. hai now same thing happens with fission we are going up hill here you, this breaks into two products but when you combine those two products masses it is less then when you had the original piece in there and that is where the rest of it is converted into um, the kinetic energy this neutron is moving fast now this is the energy that is released so if you have any doubts you are free please feel free to ask otherwise we'll start the questions from j mains level this was asked in 2010 paper